all about New Zealand, composer opportunities, and books to read with Ben Hoadley. Stay inspired. So Ben, I was just so excited to dive into your work as a bassoonist and a composer and was just reading a bit more about sounds. They represent the music of more than 550 composers from Aotearoa, New Zealand. And just really wanted to hear more about your work with them and some of your commissions. Could you share a bit more about sounds with us? No, we're very, thanks, Julie. It's lovely to be chatting. Um, and I am so proud of that we have sounds. It's a really, it's S-O-U-N-Z or N-Z for the uh, American feeling. <laughs> no, it's a wonderful, it's, um, they, um, it, they have, I think, five full-time staff. Wow. Maybe five or six, even six. Um, so it's professionally, you know, full-time run organization to promote contemporary classical music and also jazz and I guess what we would call world music. Mm. Um, mm. But that for us that's Maori music, um Tangapura, which are the traditional Maori instruments. Um, and sort of um yeah, all music that's not kind of mainstream pop, pop and rock music. Um, of course they have their own group which is APRO. Um, Australasian Performing Rights Association, but that also includes classical composers. So we're very well supported here. Um, and sounds, I mean, my, I just suggest go to the website, www.sounds.org.nz, and you can Google, you can, you can search bassoon, or it will come up with all the pieces that have bassoon in it, or oboe. Um, it's very easy to, to, navigate. I want to actually, uh, I'm going to talk to them about having a, a tool. I think Trevco, Trevco Music have this amazing tool that you can type, you can X, say you want a piece for bassoon, flute and cello. You can make it, you can list that and then it will tell you all the pieces that they have for that particular combination of it. very unusual. So I think they're getting a, a tool like that so you can be even more specific. And that will bring it, that will come up with all the pieces and the composers. It's very comprehensive, and um, and a lot of people they say they want to have some new pieces for their recital or their their um, chamber music. Um, a lot of these works haven't been performed in North America, so it would be a premiere, you know, for people at um, colleges who are doing their their research. Um, definitely. Um, now, the lovely thing also is that you can, a lot of the composers have links to their websites and, or you can email sounds directly. And um, the the guy at sounds who does all the liaison, that's, um, that's Jonathan Engel. He's a flute player. He's from, from New York. Um, he's so, super quick to reply. So, say so I've got a message for, um, Ben Hoadley, um, he will pass it on. And then it's up to the composer if they want to get into a, a dialogue or not. But usually, I mean, we're pretty, pretty friendly. But... <laughs> Could you tell us more about your work with sounds, Ben? Um, I've started being involved with sounds as a bassoon player because I was researching New Zealand bassoon music to play at my recitals when I went to... America to start to Boston to study. I wanted to include some New Zealand repertoire. Now I will say with all with all um, respect, there was not a lot of New Zealand bassoon music. We had a few. This is in the nineties. We had a few amazing pieces like the Anthony Watson Quartet for bassoon and string trio, which I think is one of the best pieces bassoon pieces of all time for, for anywhere in the in the world so definitely anthony watson quartet so you can go you can search that it sounds um, but there really wasn't a lot actually there was i think one piece that i could put on that i could program on my recital so i made it a sort of mission that when i came back to live in New well I was it was starting even when I was in still living in Boston I commissioned 
two pieces, one from Gillian Whitehead, um, that's really been played a lot now around, I hear of performances of that that I didn't know about before, were ha and it's just lovely when a piece like that has, starts to have its own, own life. Um, and yeah, gradually came, came back, went to the Nelson Composers Workshop, which is sort of our meeting place once a year for composers and performers. If anyone can go, um, it's a real institution here. It's been running for over 30 years. It's in Nelson every winter or summer, summer for you. I mean, I can't always go, but I try to when I can. And um, it's just lo been lovely to see there's been so much bassoon music now. Every, I did a couple of demonstra bassoon demonstrations around um, the unis and then composers email me with these pieces. And it's not just me. I mean, there's been other, um, I mean, Praman Tilson in the, who was in the NZSO, he commissioned a bassoon concerto. Hamish McKeach did a contra concerto. I think you've done things, you know, everyone's sort of, I mean, it's been lovely to have this interest in the bassoon. And of course it's always been there, but I think it's really blossomed in the last decade. I feel we, we were able to do that with sounds, with the support of sounds. I wrote a cha an opera, a chamber opera based on Miss Brill, which is a short story by Catherine Mansfield, who's one of our, our sort of iconic um, short story writers. And then the Sydney Symphony bassoon section was doing a concert in Sydney. And I play with this, I probably worked with the Sydney Symphony more than any other orchestra um, as a sub one the con various contracts so i know them all very well and they wanted a, a or maybe i sort of imposed imposed <laughs> <laughs> i said you can't do a recital without a uh, um a contemporary a, a piece that's my my sort of rule sometimes you can, it's it's not always possible but i try every time i do a recital I try and have at least a new new piece or a piece by a composer that I know and also a female composer if I can not always possible but when that's the case it's not intentional so I said you need a you need a, a new piece so I had just had this this um opera premiered in Sydney and there were some really catchy tunes in it i was people were humming them around. so i thought i don't want to i'm going to re recycle this so i made the three pieces from um, miss brill for bassoon quartet it's a it's quite um it's not without it's would say good sort of advanced high school players definitely um college students for our system it would be about grade seven for the royal school grade seven eight so it's not easy but um, I might do another one because I really feel that there is a, yeah, bassoon quartet is such a great combination. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. of all the instruments, of all the single, you know, if you put single instruments together in a quartet, bassoon is possibly the best. Could you tell us more about when you were in Boston and then had this like realization about um, bassoon music and needing, you know, some more New Zealand uh music for bassoon did that kind of like you know ignite that that mission to to start composing more for bassoon or oh yeah no that's I, I just started composing because I'd always thought of myself as a composer growing up at, at even primary school so I was writing little pieces and then high school I learned bassoon there were and was good got quite good early on I mean I could make a sound <laughs> and they needed bassoon but there's always been a bassoon shortage in the high schools here so of course I was immediately playing in the youth or the Auckland Youth Orchestra when there were flute players who had been playing for 10 years and they still hadn't 
got in and they were much better than I was. But that's just the way it was if you play the bassoon. And so I had a, probably a, an, um, a bigger ego than I should have had. <laughs> <laughs> Money, and I'd go and work at the ice cream parlor and scoop in ice creams and make um, $10 an hour. And then I'd make, I'd go and do a gig and make a hundred dollars to go and play the bassoon for, you know, and I was like, this is nice. You know, this, I like, I like this. Yes. <laughs> and, That's a good point. Yes. <laughs> um, but maybe never doing that real sort of studying that I should have, you know, those years of that the flute players actually do. And that the people do in the states where there are fewer opportunities, you know, that you do, there is competition if you play the the bassoon. Um, you know, that's more. Um, I I met much better players, bassoon players, than myself at the high school age that weren't getting a look in because there were just other great people. Mm -hmm. You know, so I love that I had the opportunities in New Zealand to work but on the other hand i needed to be a small fish in a big pond for mm -hmm. a while um but i haven't answered your question about the composing um, so yes i kind of i always wanted to do composing but bassoon took over um as being my thing so i came back to composing after um yeah being involved with sounds putting on some concerts of New Zealand music and seek and sort of shamelessly adding, including my own piece. And then getting good feedback from the people thinking, you know, this is actually something that I can do, that I am good at, that I can, you know, I was encouraged. Whereas mm. in high school, I was encouraged definitely more towards playing the bassoon. The Nelson Composers Workshop. Could you share a bit more about how, how the format is? Um, they have, uh, and I believe there's similar similar things in other countries. I mean, there'll be lots of them in North America, but the, the nice thing about Nelson is it's, it's free. You don't have to pay. You, you have to pay to fly down and stuff. Everyone stays at the youth hostel. You don't have to stay there, but if you, it's sort of, you miss out on the social aspect. Always the same. Um, they have a... I usually it's sort of one of each of the instruments, so it's mm -hmm. not more chamber and this maybe a singer. It's a di different every every year, but usually they'll definitely have a string quartet and a clarinet and a bass clarinet mm -hmm. and a bassoon um, of sort of professional players or composers who are advanced players. Um, and then, so I used to go as a as a b composer, and then if anyone wrote for a bassoon, which wasn't all the time back then, I would also play the bas play in their piece. Um, so usually they have about thirty composers. It started to be more, so they do have to have some sort of um, vetting at the you know, so they will not accept every score, but usually they do, and so then you said that you do every session, they have maybe four or five sessions a day and you listen to everyone, everyone's composition is played and it's workshopped, you have about half an hour. They do a run through, then you talk about the piece and it used to be quite, now everyone is very, used to be in the nineties, it used to get quite, quite heated. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> come up in, the um in the workshop interesting tangents it's really i mean a few years ago there was this really someone had a piece and then we ended up talking about how music how composers seem to have higher incidences of, of mental mental um illness than mm -hmm. say you know other and that all went into a big tangent then we ended up not even talking about the actual composition that because it was based on a friend who'd had, a, you know, that's, um, yeah, so that was, I mean, that, that composition didn't really get its, get its enough attention, but that's just the way it works. That's the way it is. It's just the way it goes. And it opened up this whole other discussion. Mm -hmm. So that's what I love about it. And um, I would say that sort of uh, 
ninety percent of the collaboration that I've had has come out of Nelson meeting mm -hmm. people at Nelson. Thank you for sharing about that, Ben. I wanted to dive in also just and mention and share for everyone listening about um, the Composers Association of New Zealand and thought this was another just important um, organization to highlight. Um, and so the Composers Association of New Zealand is the association for all amateur and professional composers in New Zealand. And just how they contribute towards special projects and awards. They award two prizes annually. Can you share a bit more about this organization, Ben? Um, yeah, no, that's the association. So every it's a sort of, um, yeah, like not a union. It would be a little bit like a union. Mm, got it. They, they have the scale of fees. So if you um, commission something, they have a sort of fees schedule okay. where mm. you have to so they print their advocates um, of course with commissioning it's a difficult thing because I know a lot of um, I mean if I get a commission if I, someone asked me to write a piece and I know that they you know they have ground money and it's a professional professional organization and that's you know they're able to pay the sort of rate that's set down by sound Mm. Uh, like for example, I wrote a piece was commissioned by Chamber Music New Zealand. I mean, that's a that's a, a major presenter of Chamber Music. You know, they're professional. They have a, you know, they expect that you ask for a professional fee. But say if I wrote, say if you said, look, Ben, I really want you to write a bassoon mm -hmm. quartet, and it's going to be so we can guarantee these perform. You know, we, but I've got we've got um, you know, a hundred dollars. Say. Or, um, I mean, I did a piece for free last year because I really, really believed in the, I believed in it. Yes. You know, you just have to take that, um, you have to take that as a per case thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and either say yes or no. I mean, the cans is there just to make sure that you don't feel um, used. Right. If mm -hmm. I, if you said, "Oh Ben," and this is all hypothetical, I really want you to write this, um, this piece for bassoon quartet, and I wasn't really sure. I could call someone at Can said, "Look, I really need some mm -hmm. advocacy. I've been asked by this, um, by Julie. You know, do you think this is a good, uh, you know, say, um, can you, and they'll give good advice. Mm -hmm. So we're very grateful that." We have them, and also they. The website has a lot. You know, they publish things like calls for score or opportunities, um, um, also. And then they also, I think, um, help organize the um, Asia Pacific Composers League. Right. So we have all these things. I'd actually say composer. Um, I don't want to say I don't want to open up a, a subject, but I'd actually say that I feel more supported in the profession mm. as a composer than I do as a bassoon player. And that doesn't mean to say that I feel unsupported, but um, mm. I think composers have worked very hard to make to get make sure that they have representation and that they are take that they are treated with respect. Mm -hmm. Doing some research on the Creative New Zealand website, Ben, for commissioning, it's so humbling how they, they have these um, already set rates and, um, and like templates of contracts for composers. So there's like, a, you know, a minimum set yeah. where, and I, I, I think that's so wonderful. Well, and even for, fun. yeah, for musicians too. Yeah. I mean, it works the other way as well because I don't want people to feel that they can't um, that they can't ask a composer to write something because they can't. I mean, obviously, not most people can't afford the fees that they're saying. Mm. Mm. They're more for sort of. I mean, if you do anyone that wants to write that they want to, uh, they've got a friend who's a composer. I mean, I think it's like anything else. You wouldn't go to go around to your friend's house and they, you know, that they're a dentist, and you say, "Oh, can you just have a look at?" <laughs> That's you right. Know. Yeah. Um, but you know, again, if it's your friend, it's. Diff um, I mean, I went round to my friend, my doctor friend's house. Said, "Oh, Ben, is your is your um, is your wrist still bothering you?" And he gave me this 
lovely massage. Mm -hmm. And and I said, look, I can't, I'm going to make it. He said, oh, no, look, it's fine. Mm -hmm. You've got to let them initiate it. I mm -hmm. said, look, let me make an appointment and pay. He said, no, well, I'll just give you a little, some, you know, chiropractor. Now, you know, it's all sort of, you, it's very, del it's, a, it's delicate and you mm -hmm. need to just sort of, but don't, if you, if someone has a composer friend, don't hesitate to ask them what, if they, you know, I'd like you to write me a piece. Tell me what you would need. Yes. Composers are very or, yeah. They'll tell you. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, if someone says, oh, you know, Julie, will you play the bassoon at my my wedding? Say, you have to decide if that's what, you know, something that you want to do um, as a friend or as in a professional capacity. It's called the Encyclopedia of New Zealand Composers. I'd say, yeah, I wouldn't, I think that would be, um, that's a project that's still sort of in that's a little bit like um, Wikipedia. People that are adding are sort of people that know more about it. Sounds, I think, would be the most um, impartial thing because, yeah, but they're all excellent resources. Mm. Do you have any favorite books that you've read recently that you could share with us about? I'm reading about Bartok, I'm reading Bartok's biography wow. and um, I'm reading, I just, I'm in, I just saw this book that I lent to my mother. It's called The Last Painting of Sarah DeVos. Have you what? read that? No. It's about a female painter in the Netherlands in the 16th century and about how she struggled after her husband was also a painter and how she struggled after he died. And all of her struggles about being a female painter in the first place, so she was one of two females in the guild, and that she was expected to only paint um, very pretty still lives, like pictures of tulips and things, and that she actually painted um, country, no, she painted village scenes, and that was seen as very not you know, for a, a female to be painted, that was not acceptable. And I just, and then I read about, um, compose, well, Bartok is a, um, and the, and just think about the struggles that they had. Mm -hmm. Like all the struggles that they, that they had, and even the, the one, you know, the sort of very privileged um, white male composer, you know, like Mendel's, well, no, I don't know, Schumann, Robert Schumann, say, you know, his struggles, even from someone that you would look at them and say they had everything going for them. Mm. You know, everyone has their own burden. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then I think, well, you know, these composers, they managed to, um, create this music and then I complain because I am trying to write a piece and then someone's got their radio on next door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have such a terrible, I can't work, I'm, a, I'm an artist. My <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> wrote the whole of the concerto for August and he was dying and like, in, you know, and I thought, my God, I never had, and then all the persecute I was I never had to deal with that <laughs> and I still like cannot I can't feel I can't work properly so I think this book has been a real eye-opener for me to think I really need to I need to pull it together <laughs> <laughs> could you share with us a bit more about your bassoons Ben I've had heckle um so when I was about um 20 I did an audition actually it was for the NZSO and they said, look, you have a lovely sound, but it's just not very characterful. And then I'd done another audition the week later and they said the same thing. Did I tell you this already? No, no. Oh. Um, so I did sort of two or three auditions. They said, look, um, my moose, Mooseman, which was very similar to what Selena has. Mm -hmm. And it was a nice, it, I find them a little bit inconsistent. 
but it was a lovely one, very similar to an 11,000 mm-hmm. echo. Mm. Now that I look back on it, because I played that actual instrument um, a few years ago, I met the per- uh, when it came came back, and I thought, you know, this was actually a really lovely bassoon. Um, but they said, I, I just said, uh, oh, look, I have to get the, one of these heckles. That's just what I need to have a more characterful <laughs> sound. I was very supportive, like I had very supportive parents. And then, but I think the sound was too, probably too characterful for a while. Because as we <laughs> go, if everyone knows, if you go from a lovely new instrument where everything is so even, and, and then you go to an old, old heckle, and this needed work, I mean, it was a nice 9,000 series, but it needed restoration. It was, it was idiosyncratic. So I made that work for a, a few years, and then I, dis- I went to Boston, and then every, um, a lot of people had, had heckled. People were saying, oh, look, this is actually a really nice bassoon. Hold on to it. So I played principal in Hartford for a few years, for three years, and then I was freelancing around Boston, and then I thought I need to try, I really want a pre-war heckle, Mm because I'd tried some that people had, and I just loved, loved them. But then I went through a sort of crisis of thinking that I needed a new heckle, so I was really betwixt and between for a few years about deciding what I, what I wanted between a sort of pre-war or a, a newer one. I had a 13,000 for about 18 months, um, which was absolutely gorgeous. And I don't know why I really sold it. Looking back, I should have probably held on to it as an investment. <laughs> But then I found this 7,000, and that's a whole other story, that I just thought I need to have this bassoon. It was speak, I was having dreams about it. So I bought the 7,000, and I had to sell the 13 to pay for the 7. Mm-hmm. It's been, it, I mean, it's sort of been my voice for, mm-hmm. I really, it took a while. It really did. But then earlier this year, well, last year I was looking for, I, th- I started to think I wanted another bassoon. So I actually bought a Yamaha. Um, and then it was a really gorgeous bassoon. But again, it wasn't my voice. I didn't really gel. I didn't bond with it. Mm-hmm. And then I finally decided, oh, I love my 7,000 heckle. I'm going, it's my forever bassoon. So I've made that, and then I was just randomly trying bassoons at Matthew Wilkie's last, oh, a few months ago. He's principal and associate principal, well, principal emeritus in Sydney Symphony. And he said, oh, I've got this 6,000 you might like. And, you know, I tried it and it was just, <laughs> I really need this. this <laughs> I, I have to have that. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he didn't want to sell it straight oh. away. I, 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 no, I've got, so I've got two, two heckles and now I have this 5,000. So in, in my house, four heckles in my house, I've got a 10,000 from Mel, University of Melbourne and the two, and then a five, six and a seven. Um, and I love all of the <laughs> <laughs> It's all four really bri- love, forever bassoons. <laughs> oh my God. I, really love, I really love the Melbourne Uni Uni 10 more than I thought I would actually I'm, I'm delivering it back to, I'm, I'm looking after it because I'm going to take I need to take it back to Australia for someone that had was borrowing it here and I actually really it's got a really nice sound but there's just something with the 6000 it just has it's got the je ne sais quoi it mm-hmm. just it's superior it's a superior bassoon from anything that i've played that i've owned or played mm-hmm. so i'm happy with that i want to i'm going to see where that goes i don't mean to put richard on the spot but i know richard has a pretty beautiful collection of bassoons also 
My latest is a 12, and it's out for, with a young man who thinks he might like to buy it if he can afford it. But otherwise, I have a collection of threes, fours, two fives, two sevens, uh, two tens, and of course, that one 12. And the fun part, of course, is uh, I try to once a year pull out uh, a and a sample of each series and let them try and see how they've changed. Mm. One well, of the fascinating ones to me is the 3000 because it's the same period that that Weisenberg and Milley would have been playing. It's made about 1880, something like that. Um, but no, it's, I'm, I'm reaching an age where I probably have to start considering selling them off. Right now I'm playing a very early seven. It's only a few numbers away from Bernard Garfield's old seven. What Where, number is, can I ask what number that is? 7008. Oh, okay, so, um, wow, because I've heard that those seven zeros are particularly sought after. No, I have another, but it's a 73. Okay, mine is 729. Yeah, the 73 okay. is, is really even and quite dark. Uh, it doesn't have the ring that the earlier one has. And it has changed. I'm playing it back in now because I had Jimmy Keys uh, put tubes in it. And, I, and he also put tubes in my tent. Um, what bassoon is your main, your, your main one for playing? Well, right now, it's, it's, uh, I'm playing this, the 7008. Mm -hmm. For many years in the 90s and late 80s, I, I guess it was uh, Marin's, the young man who plays in Chicago, and I commented and he played... <clears throat> for his all-state stuff, he listened to a number of my recordings back then, and I've had a couple of kids come steady with me because, simply because they like my sound, and those recordings were on my 12. Mm -hmm. But at one time, I had that worked on. I had uh, uh, Carl Swicky redo a couple of instruments, and uh, for one reason or another, as I was playing my 12 in the symphony at the uh, intermission of the rehearsal, I decided to try this 4,000, this 4,800 that I just yeah. got back restored from Carl Sawicki. And we hadn't played probably two or three phrases when the heads of my colleagues in the section turned around and looked at me and said, play that one. So the last few years with the Lubbock Symphony that I played principal was on the 4,800. It's a very yeah. open, very open sounding one. And the 5554, five, five, one of my students just returned it to me. He'd been playing that now for the last four or five years and as principal of the Olympic Symphony. But he felt it was just too bright. Wound up buying himself a, a new manic. Okay. That's really fascinating um, about the, the four. You must, that must be the old, your, that's the oldest bassoon that I've known of being played in a modern orchestra. Which one? Your four. Oh, I've got four fours. Wow. Um, um, one, of, one, of them is, one of them is Jack Spratt's old instrument. He's being played by a former student up in Kansas City right now. Um, can I ask? I need to. The six has got really terrible. It was refinished in the 70s badly and it's all crumbly. It's the ugliest bassoon. And I really want to get it refinished. Um, who would you recommend for that? Well, if you can get them, the. Superb job is what Carl Swicky does. He's in Texas, but I don't know if he's taking on anybody else. But he has one customer regular, and I know that he does he does all the checking on the Molnar concerts that, that are imported right now. Um, Paul this, Nordby in Indianapolis has done also some just gorgeous refinish work. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. I keep hearing... Um, do they need to take the posts out? Is it possible to do the refinishing without taking out the posts? I think if they're doing a real finish of the color and stain and stuff, they take the posts out. Carl did. He has a board that they put on, so they all go back in the same spot. Yeah, on the, the other hand, I had an 11,000 that I had to kind of refinish myself. Haas maybe worked on it. We worked on it to a point, to me, because it had some problems. And we stopped because it just leaked so badly. He said, I have, to, I have to give it an oil bath. So I soaked it for three days in raw, unboiled linseed oil. And I left all the posts in and just took off the keys. But it had shrunk so severely you couldn't get the bell on and all the furniture, that is the rings and stuff, were just falling off. Yeah. Wow. 
Uh, it made, it, it made it a big, dark-sounding instrument. The downside was it was a big, dark-sounding instrument. I couldn't get much variety of colors out of it after the soap. Uh, yeah, I oiled my um, seven, and I regret doing that because it changed the timbre for about six months, but then it went back to how it was. You used almond oil? Um, it was raw linseed. Actually, I didn't do it. I took it to someone and they oiled it without letting me know that they were going to be doing that because I don't, I'm actually allergic to linseed oil. <laughs> um, so that was a bit big miss because I play the Baroque on the Baroque bassoon. They always, they are sort of doused in linseed oil. And I, um, I'm, I got really allergic to my Baroque bassoon, <laughs> which was kind of unfortunate. What? What, what was your Baroque bassoon? Reproduction? It was a Lee Ross. Yeah. Um, Shara. I hadn't heard of people oiling their Baroque instrument. That's why I asked. Yeah. Um, oh, this is fascinating. I'll come and visit, visit the bassoon collection when I'm in the States, hopefully next year. You'll be most welcome. Thank you. You'll have to try the area. I have two threes. One of them, I think, is a full echo. I'm not sure. The other one is original, and it's really quite delightful. You get an idea of, of the lovely old cello-like sound of this earlier instrument. Are they at 440? Uh, yes, actually. Uh -huh. I can put a vocal extension on and play about 435, but no, I can play it at 440. Wow. I would love to see you there. Actually, Richard, if you have any vocals, um, um, well, like it's it's very difficult to try vocals in New Zealand because um, we just don't. You, uh, yeah, we. I've asked everyone, and no one is selling any. So I want to see. I have a. I have the C, just a straight, a standard C, which works very well. But I need to get a backup because I don't have anything else at the moment. I played this morning and got into it. And I couldn't make any changes, but I was a little bit flat. And I probably needed my zero vocal mm -hmm. to match the other instrument. Is there a course that you wish was offered to students today? Anything? We have a course at the Sydney, Sydney Conservatory of Business and Management for, and that was, that was, um, really good at the time. Mm -hmm. I remember that was one of my most useful courses and they did talk about um, promoting and they talked about um, doing tax return, like being self-employed, mm -hmm. um, all those things. I, mean, I wish I'd done accounting at high school. No, I've mm. got, reg I have a lot of regrets. I said this to Jackie and Galit in the, in the, about all my regrets um, about not, oh. not, doing, um, I mean, I was so focused on doing bassoon and composition that I sort of thought, oh, it's irrelevant to have to do accounting and um, those subjects, but they are actually really important. Yes. Um, but I find that the young people, the young people that I'm co tutoring, they're pretty onto it with websites and sort of Instagram, like social media and I find people sort of gravitate to it. If they've got that sort of now, then they will, they'll gravitate to it and they'll find out. Um, some people are just sort of more, more naturally. Resourceful. I think the classical music is going to find a way to survive. I really, really do. I'm not, I don't think that it's a dying thing. Hmm. It's yeah, going to be different. Um, I remember this teacher saying, and this is in 1995, 96, hmm. saying in, in, in 10 years, I mean, we didn't even have email. Email was like this thing that you only had if you were like a super nerd. Like my friend in in um, America, in, in New Mexico, he'd come over as an exchange student to Auckland. And then he said, oh, we can keep in touch by email. I mean, a phone call in those days was a phone call was something that you did every once a month. Right. So email. I just remember thinking that that was just the most. That was <laughs> just the most um, advanced mm -hmm. thing. 
that you could possibly do. Mm -hmm. And that was an email. That wasn't even like, I mean, to think that you'd be able to do this video conferencing for free. Mm -hmm. I mean, just price of, of, wi of your wi Wi-Fi. And it's just, it was in incomprehensible. Mm -hmm. um, so, and the teacher said in 10 years, all CD, like you will be able to download music on the computer and buy music um, on the internet and I just that was I I thought oh well I won't need to do that because I'll be so I'll be so successful as an orchestral player that I won't need to worry <laughs> about <laughs> yes <laughs> I was just in, in um and also, so, but now it's so mainstream. You can post something on the on the YouTube, and, it's, and you're not seen as being um, as being self promoting or being arrogant. No, COVID has actually given us a plat more of a platform than we've ever ever had. Mm -hmm. um, and just, I worry about the financial the financial side, um, but in terms of opportunity for exposure, it's greater than it's ever been. There's yes. been benefits from from this, but no, it won't. It's I mean, orchestra. I really miss playing an orchestra. Sometimes that I've cried because I miss orchestra so much. And unfortunately for my myself, I had turned down work in New Zealand because I thought I was going to have work in Australia, which didn't happen. Because and now my orchestra in Melbourne has been is we're postponed until at least August. All New Zealand's probably was the first country that all the orchestras were back playing. Um, I felt very discombobulated last year knowing that all these people were working and here that my all the orchestras were working and that I was just kind of sitting around not doing in, not doing any playing. Mm -hmm. um, that was good. Because I just keep needing to remind myself that I have other things that I do like composing and that the orchestra work is coming back. Mm -hmm. But that was just my, the way it was. Um, I mean, I've definitely made up for that previously with the, doing heaps of orchestra. So I don't want to, I get worried when people say um, orchestras are elite and that they're, they're just for rich people and they're, and they're not, catering for you know that they're not going to survive their dinosaurs i really don't think that's the case i think people orchestras are reinventing themselves like what the san francisco symphony is doing with their with their with their pod with their font um i was at a i did educational concerts this weekend i played bassoon in the with us of uh, chamber orchestra in auckland for maybe 200 kids they were so interested you know, they were fascinated. They were definitely, you know, it's not, it's not going to die. Thank you so much, Ben, for your time. And we can go ahead and end this session here.